Ah, uh, what to do with this, the blank page. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I get started on an abstract painting. Painting is a beautiful from the very moment. It's not really expected. Before you get started, it's really good to warm up. You don't want to go in cold. There's lots of different ways to do that, and you don't have to spend a lot of time doing it, but you can have fun with it. One of the things I've been doing lately is mark making, and if you watch my video on mark making, it inspired me to make a book where I just do marks, and I created this one. So that's that, and this is a mixture of nice paper and um, not, not great paper, and I just threw a bunch of different pages in there. But another way that I've been warming up recently that I didn't used to like to do is contour drawing. And you only have to spend about 10 minutes doing it. I really enjoy it now. I used to find it very tedious. Just get your eyeballs warmed up. So let's try that. I bought this really large pad of newsprint. I felt like it was just one of those lessons I had to do in art class. But now I really enjoy it because I appreciate what it does for me. And what it does is it really helps me make that hand-eye connection. And when I'm looking at the things that I'm contour drawing, I'm actually really enjoying looking at all the edges of things because I know that in the future, I'm going to be using that on a lot of my pieces and that muscle memory will stick. I like just some soft black charcoal. Oh, and I'm going to wear a glove and it's really not important. You can just draw what's in front of you if you want. This is a sculpture my uncle did. And I'm just going to get started by looking at the outlines of the object and have a light touch on the charcoal. And I find it very pleasing to do this now. I didn't like to used to do it. It felt like more like a chore. I don't look at the art at all. I don't look at my piece at all. I mean, yeah, you can cheat if you want to like break the line or whatever. Just really enjoy that feeling of learning those lines that you don't normally get to do unless you're in art school. And, uh, you know, occasionally I'll look to make sure I'm not going off the paper. And then I'm going to look at my uncle's sculpture and I'm going to go right on top of the books. I don't care. I just love it. Those triangles and that's it you don't even have to do this very long you can do it for 10 minutes and I used to really not like contour drawing or even drawing plants at all because it's really hard <laughs> but if I know I'm only gonna spend like 10 minutes or five minutes doing this then it gets fun I think just knowing that I will be able to use these lines in my paintings later on. This later on encourages me to keep going with this exercise. Because otherwise, when I'm making marks and lines on my paintings, I have nothing to draw from really, except my imagination and I often get stuck because I don't have that as a reliable source. We have to use museum tack on our flowers because one of the kitties is a naughty kitty and she, not naming any names, will knock the whole thing over and the water just goes everywhere. So that contour drawing exercise, um, it really got me enthused about starting a piece. I got all warmed up. So let's move on. 
So maybe I'll work on two pieces at once. One on a piece of paper and we'll rotate between that and this big guy right here. I always wondered how people get the cool lines that seem like they mean something in their painting. Um, Vered Gertzenkorn, she's Israeli and I'm just in love with her right now. Her paintings are so beautiful. I stopped looking. I was looking at the paper <laughs> and there's like a computer cord that's kind of going through the piece that I like. Probably need a hairdryer because <laughs> it's going to take a long time to dry. That's why I don't usually start a painting with charcoal, but that's an experiment. Pencil, chunky pencil. I like to start my paintings with a grid and that's a, another great way to get started. So. Um, I like the grid because, and I just, I don't do a very exact one. It keeps me honest <laughs> and I can see everything in thirds. I'm going to use the angles, go off the grid a little bit. I don't want to be completely on the grid and I'm going to just use it as a guide. I also have a kneadable eraser in my hand because I like that look of marks being erased and then drawn back on. And I'm going to look at my uncle's sculpture just so I get some darker lines. I'm just going to go really light. Like I'm just going to go really sloppy. Like I don't, I like to do it like I'm like a little kid. off the edge. I really like this blue, if we're going to stick with the blue, or we could do a shocking color, like a green. That's not really expected. Texture in there that a little bit, some of it. Some of it I want to leave that crayon -y look. This is 7 Pro Art 520 round. So we've established some more of the line in there. 
It's time for your dinner, isn't it? And, oh, I'm sorry, did I get you? I'm gonna go wash my hands and feed the cat because he won't leave me alone unless I feed him. And then I'll come back and I'll show you a few other ways to start a painting. Great way to start a painting is to tone, and that'll just get everything warmed up. You're not really concentrating on uh, composition or line work. You're just getting a basic color across the page. I think I got this at the hardware store. I really like this brush, and I just kind of cut the edge. Maybe some dry brush look here. You can tone your paper with this neutral color. Another great trick that I've learned from my husband is to tone the paper with a really bright color that will shine through the rest of the painting. Let's paint across here. It's very bright. <laughs> it's lovely. While those dry, I'm gonna go back to my other pieces. Now this looks like a mess, uh, and that's okay, that's good. You want a mess. Let me show you how to sort of edit this so it starts to come together. Let's edit. See, I like this white space here already, but let's go, let's break up this composition a little bit. And just a very light touch. And when I'm doing this, I'm looking. I'm looking at my art. I'm not just randomly throwing paint down at this point. It might be keep some of the lines in there. I don't know. I don't know exactly. But I'm going to look at my painting. And I like to look at parts of the painting that I don't really like and maybe cover some of those up. Through a little bit on there. see the dark underneath it and I'm looking to get lots of different textures and I want smooth textures I want rough textures I want textures that maybe feel ugly to you at the moment but later on become beautiful so leave that like that and then another one that I have is we're working on this guy and let's do some editing on here. Listen to this painting. I want to listen. I want to see it, but I also want to listen to it. I want to hear what it has to tell me. And again, try not to work in the center. Like if you feel like your line is becoming in the center, I always kind of move it off to the side so it's not right in the center. With this one that's now dry, let's take some cues from this mark making book that I 
made and I like that right there. as a stencil. Let's see how that goes. Just gonna This is how I've started pretty much all of the paintings in here. Um, and then I go in and I add collage and I start to fill it in. Another great way to start a piece is to, underneath I have this line work in here that I've drawn in and then do some bright washes of color. This is when I started as well. This has got some line work underneath and some big washes of color. Here's an example of one that I started and I just put some extra paint down and um, use your leftover paint and just fill the page with it so that you're not wasting paint. If you have a painting that you don't like, uh, go in and just cover it up with some paint. And you can do that and some of that might shine through in the final painting. And I have a nice place to start. So these are the pieces as I've left them. At this stage, do I like these paintings? No, I really don't like them. In fact, I was kind of hesitant to show you them because I'm afraid that you're gonna judge me and you're gonna be like, oh, she's a terrible painter and she doesn't know what she's doing, but the fact that a painting isn't beautiful from the very moment that you start putting paint down to the very end when you decide it's done is something that I had to learn. I remember when I was in a Nicholas Wilton workshop and I was just learning how to paint and I was not having a lot of success and it was frustrating. And for some reason, I thought, I think I told Nicholas, I was like, why can't I why is it taking me so many tries to make something that I like? And he took me aside and he said, you know, he showed me some famous master and he goes, look, there's, all, can you see all the lines underneath? This artist didn't get it right from the get go. I thought that artists were like magical. Someday I would just be really good at it and I wouldn't have to uh, massage my paintings. I wouldn't have to struggle. I wouldn't have to go through the phases from like not so great to great. But that process is really fun now for me. I understand that I can push through this and that this is not my final painting and my final painting is done when I decide it's done. And I can work on this for as long as I want. In my next episode, I'm gonna show you how I get more here from those paintings that I started today.